To be honest, I saw that Katie from Life Between Words had filmed her November wrap up in front of her Christmas tree and I just thought, yep, yeah, that's happening. Hi guys, it's Jess and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it is your first time here. Today I'm going to be filming my November wrap up which includes three books that I read during the month of November and then one that I have just finished at the start of December but as I'm quite late filming this I just thought that I would stick it in and include it. So as always I'm going to go through in the order that I read the books so let's jump straight in. The first book that I have to talk about is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch and I did mention this very briefly in my October wrap up just to say that it's a soft science fiction book. Basically it tells the story of a scientist called Jason who goes out to a bar and on his way home he is abducted and when he wakes up his life is not his life as he knows it but everybody around him seems to know who he is and without saying too much because I don't want to spoil it this basically takes a look at quantum physics and the possibility that there are several parallel universes happening um, at the same time as our world and I'm gonna be honest I enjoyed the book I enjoyed the storyline but a lot of the science went way over my head and I really only had the slightest clue what was going on um, because James explained it to me um, I picked this up because I had been told that it was a good option for people who don't read a lot of science fiction and are perhaps put off a little bit by science fiction because of the heavy science element um, but I still struggled with what was going on but I thought that the storyline was good. It was easy to read, it was well written, um, I enjoyed the concept once I understood what the concept was um, so yeah a pretty solid read for me. Next up we have Peace Like a River by Leif Inger and I read this with a couple of other girls um, as part of a buddy read and I predominantly picked this up because this is a book that Katie from Life Between Words has talked pretty non-stop about on her channel and she just really really raves about it and when I was out in Chicago she actually gave me her copy because this is a book that is really difficult to find in the UK. So basically it's told from the perspective of a boy called Ruben Land who is an asthmatic young boy who lives out in the Midwest. He's telling this when he is I presume an adult although that's never actually clarified and Ruben's brother gets involved in something and becomes an outlaw and so Ruben his sister Swede and their father Jeremiah set out on a cross-country journey to try and find their brother and bring him back. Um, it is an absolutely stunning story. It, the writing in this book is so exquisite and so beautiful and so well thought through and every word it felt like had been so carefully selected and placed within each sentence. The, it's just an absolute crafted masterpiece. I absolutely loved it and the reason that I loved it was because of the writing, because the writing was just so, so exceptional. Um, I, I could read you passages and passages from the book where you just would fall in love with the writing. I mean, I cannot bang on about it enough. Um, I thought that the story was pretty slow moving, but there's something about it that captures you. So not a lot actually happens, and yet you find yourself pulled in and you want to keep going and you want to keep reading. It is a story of faith. There is a big faith element to it, although I don't think that you need to have a Christian faith in order to pick it up, but that does feature and the concept of miracles and the concept of God having a plan for your life do feature within the plot. So if you find that off-putting then I would suggest that that's probably not the book for you. But I don't think that you necessarily need to share the same faith to be able to enjoy the way that this story is written and the way that the story is conveyed but I am so so pleased that I read this and if you haven't picked it up yet and if you haven't even come across it yet then I'll try I think I mentioned this in another video but I will try and try and find a, a link where you can get this book in the UK and I will link it in the description box down below I know that you can get hold of it if you live overseas um, but I don't think that it's as easily found 
um, in the UK but I will do some research after I have filmed this and if I can find a link I will stick it in the description box down below if not I'm really sorry but if you can get hold of a copy of this book then I would highly recommend that you do. Next up we have The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I've mentioned this book a couple of times over the last few months mainly saying that my reason for wanting to read it is because it produces such a strong divide in people's opinions. I have had people telling me that I ha absolutely have to read it, that it's a mind-opening, mind-boggling masterpiece. Um, at the same time I've had people tell me that it's a load of rubbish and that I will absolutely hate it. So I really wanted to see where I would sit on the spectrum of feelings about this book. If you are not familiar with the storyline then basically it's a dystopian novel which was written in the 1980s I think um, and there is a section of society in America who have basically decided that um, women are to have various set roles. They've gone back to the Old Testament. They've pulled from um, the story of Rachel and Leah in the Bible in the Old Testament and they've created a society around it. And women have various roles within that society but they have no status. So you can be a wife or you can be a Martha where you have a role serving or you can be a handmaiden and the handmaid's job is to basically procreate with men uh, but the whole premise is that women have become sacred and so their position in society is one of sanctity and um, they are to be highly valued and not to be touched and so it's a very interesting premise. It references a lot of issues that women may face in society such as being objectified, such as men seeing them as objects of sexuality and all that kind of thing and this has led to this society being created and the story is told from the perspective of one of the handmaids and she reflects on her life prior to the change in society, she reflects on how things ended up becoming the way that they were and her experiences in this new dystopian society and I will admit that for a large percentage of the book I was baffled by the erratic narration style and um, it seemed almost unreliable in its narration a lot of things that she said didn't seem to make sense or tie up with stuff that she'd said in an earlier chapter um, and it almost came across as very garbled and then I got to the end and there are these notes um, from I think it's a university lecture where they're talking about how they found this story recorded on some tapes and so they have translated the story and suddenly everything fell into place about the entire narration but you really don't get that until you get to the epilogue so it was really confusing for a lot of the book and then it suddenly all made sense um, I was still left with a lot of questions. I think that um, that was probably deliberate on the part of Margaret Atwood to not um, necessarily give you a happy ending or a very conclusive ending. Um, and so again, and I said this recently to someone, um, I mentioned that The Handmaid's Tale is a bit like Marmite and then I said, but the thing about Marmite is that I don't love it and I don't hate it. I kind of can tolerate a moderate amount of it. And I really feel like that applies to this book as well. I enjoyed it. It had a lot of plot holes and left me with a lot of questions and I think there were some areas that were particularly problematic but I thought that it was an interesting narration and I thought that it was an interesting premise and an interesting look at how women have become objectified and probably even more so since this was written in the 1980s and how as a society we could deal with that. I mean I'm not in any way suggesting that this is the answer to that question but it did raise questions for me about the fact that women are so objectified and that a lot of what we see in the media and what we hear is that women are objects of sexuality and it's our role to be um, these objects and to make ourselves as beautiful as we can so that we are desirable and all that kind of thing. This is not a feminist rant so I'm not going to go on and on and on about it. Um, but yeah, I just, so I thought it was interesting from that perspective um, but the writing style was a little bit off for me and I think I walked away mostly having wanted just a little bit more 
from the book and I had expected a little bit more from the book uh, but I'm interested now to watch the Netflix series and see how they have adapted this and I'm glad I'm glad that I read a modern classic I'm glad that I read this really well-known book and um, yeah that now I can tick it off my list and then unfortunately I'm ending this wrap-up on a bit of a <laughs> because the final book that I read and I'm going to talk about is The Glass Spare by Lauren de Stefano not The Glass Sphere as I have been incorrectly calling it for well since I picked it up. So this is a YA book which came in the November Owl Crate and the premise as you're led to believe from the blurb is that it's a retelling of the King Midas myth. So we follow a 15 year old girl called Will who is the fourth child and only daughter of a power hungry king and she discovers that she has the power to turn living things into gemstones so that includes everything from humans to um, leaves growing on trees and as a result of this power she is banished from the kingdom and stumbles into the path of a boy and the story kind of goes from there. My main feelings about this book is that it was an insta-love YA story that was dressed up as a retelling of a popular myth and so I felt a little bit duped. I was expecting a fantastical and interesting retelling and what I got was a book filled with lots of YA romance tropes. So the boy that Will meets um, has a hidden past and he's covered in tattoos and he's seductive and she doesn't know why she's falling in love with him because she hates him and etc etc etc. Um, there were also a lot a lot of plot holes in this book and the thing is as someone who has written a book myself I would be mortified to think that somebody read it and hated it and so I would never say that I hated a book. I would always try to find something positive to take out of a book. And I thought that the premise for this was, was really interesting and that the world building and the world it was setting could have been something really interesting. I said in my 24 hour reading vlog that I got kind of steampunky vibes from it and the whole thing as a package sounded so interesting but it just felt like it never really went anywhere so the world building fell a little bit flat and you never really got enough detail that you were able to picture it in your head um, and the characters I thought it was really difficult to connect with the characters I never felt any level of emotional connection with Will at all and I was desperate to because um, she's your protagonist she's your main character she's going through this um, life transforming experience and yet I literally felt nothing for her I was just frustrated especially because she seems to start the book as an incredibly strong kick-ass fighter of a character and then she meets a boy and then it's almost like she goes backwards rather than going on a journey of self-discovery and coming out stronger she seems to go backwards and become flighty and weak and just all oh I'm in love and it's like I don't get that at all in a in a world where we need strong female characters for our daughters to feel inspired by I just felt like what even is happening here um but yeah I don't have any particularly strong feelings about this book I just the, the main thing that I felt was that it had been rushed and that it could have been fleshed out so much more and it would have been an incredible story because it was a really easy book to read and it was an, a really easy world to fall into but I felt like once I was there I was just constantly waiting for something else to happen to kind of take me on this journey and it never really reached that point. You just never got caught up and swept along in the story um, and so it just felt really flat for me and I'm not going to ramble on or rant anymore. Um, I think it's fairly clear how I feel about the book. I, I think if you enjoy YA tropes, if you enjoy romance and insta-love um, with a little bit of um, kind of a mystical fantastical element to it then this is probably exactly the book for you but I was expecting something a little bit more wow and so I think going in with that level of expectation it just felt flat to me um, but by all means if as I said you enjoy kind of insta-love it's a really easy book to read it's a really quick book to read if that sort of thing floats your boat then this is definitely going to be a book worth trying but I had just expected something a little bit more from it I'm afraid. 
I feel like I was a little bit ranty in this wrap up today so I'm sorry if you found that off-putting. I'm not always so opinionated about books but anyway thank you for watching as always if you've read any of the books that I've chatted about and you want to talk more in the comments then of course I love to hear from people who watch these wrap-ups if you want to tell me what you're currently reading to inspire me I'm trying to make a Christmas list of some of the books that I desperately want to get to in 2018 and I need some inspiration so feel free to also leave me some uh, recommendations but as always thank you for watching please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all soon